Hey, William, have you ever had a fresh cranberry? They're really mm. sweet. Try no, one. I haven't. No. <laughs> <laughs> we have some more surprises for you next on Garden Time. William, try a second one. They're always sweeter, the second one. Welcome to Garden Time. We're at Cran Mac Cranberry Farm up in Long Beach, Washington for a cranberry harvest. And later in the show, we'll be showing you all about that. We'll also be telling you about a great cranberry festival that's happening this weekend. And speaking of festivals, we'll be at Portland Nursery on Stark Street for their annual apple tasting festival. But first, some really wonderful fall perennials. I'm at Out in the Garden Nursery and we're talking about fall and winter interest plants for your garden. So if you're ready to be planting, you have to come out here. And Carol, you really have some great ideas for us today. Well, I wanted to start with actually some really fun summer surprises before oh, we totally okay. before get we talk into about fall. fall. Great. So I have a few plants here at the end that we have in the garden that have been amazing through this heat with little to no ah, good water. To know. The biggest, biggest surprise is this fuchsia down here. It's okay. fuchsia, regia, subspecies regia. It's a species fuchsia. It's got amazing foliage. It's kind of a rambler. It doesn't grab on things, but it will go through trees mm -hmm. and through shrubs. And I have it in a place in the garden with zero water two summers in a row, and it's amazing. Wow, and that's really good to know because, man, this was a drought and yes. hot year, wasn't it? Was. it? And another couple that did really well for me, we put them in the garden last fall, so fall planting too is good for summer next summer. I have a really beautiful melina. It's just a very simple green grass with this beautiful airy foliage or, or flowers that bloom for months. They've been blooming since about June, and they'll hold all through the fall, once we have a heavy frost, that will be the end of them, but they'll go for a long, long time. And then behind this is one of the miscanthus. This is Gracilimus. It's another one. It's just looking amazing in the garden, even though it's been so hot and dry. And you know, grasses, you kind of forget about them, mm -hmm. and then they really come to shine. So really, put them in, and they'll, they'll do good work for you all year round. They really will. Another really fun combination that I have in the garden that's done extremely well with very, very little water is Sedum Autumn Joy and Molina Variegata. Um, when I first started growing Molinas, everybody said grow them in moist, they want moist soil. I have them in a very dry spot with little to no water all summer, two summers in a row, and they're absolutely amazing. Another summer surprise. Yes, excellent. it was an excellent summer surprise. Nice, and look at the color of this now. So really a pretty contrast between the gold and mm -hmm. then the pink. There's a lot of sedums on the market, but I still am having a hard time finding anything as good as Autumn Joy. It is, it's an old favorite, but still a great one. It is. And now you have a lot of low, low type of uh, Carexes, so those are great too. They're great for fall, they're good for year round. They're, uh, they're excellent container plants. Um, they're really wonderful for winter. You can move them, especially in a container, you can move them around the garden, fill up bare spots. Um, some of them, like the, the Carex testaceae, the orange sedge, Pretty. will get brighter in the winter, which is really, really nice. And there's, again, just so much nice color and texture and fabulous in containers. And then this one looks like a Carex, but it isn't. It's not. This is a Lazula. It's an alpine Lazula. It's a great little tiny dwarf grass doesn't get much bigger than it is here. And it's just this wonderful little it's green, like little, tuft. It, little tuft, or the sea urchin of the garden. Ah. And but it's a beautiful evergreen for the front of the shade border. And a lot of the Carexes are great for the garden, but also for containers they're because they stay nice and short. They're fantastic. Plus they're actually, you can move them around. They, they do best in like partial sun. So the winter, it doesn't matter, but in the summer, they really hate the hot sun. So a container, you can put them in a little shade and they'll do way better. Ah, nice. And look at this flower. Look at the striping on this. It looks like an orchid. It does it does look like an orchid, but it's a Triceris or a toad lily. It's a wonderful fall bloomer. They start about the middle of um, August. Actually, it's the late summer bloomer, mm -hmm. and they'll go through October. And if you can see, they've got a lot of flowers, oh, but they've got more buds, buds than flowers. So they're going to go through. It's another part to full shade plant. So it's nice. Our shade gardens are often kind of tired this time of the year, but that's coming in and looking awesome. Uh, and what about this variegated shrub? Because this looks really unusual, um, unusual variegation here. It's a uh, Caryopteris snow fairy. 
It's Caryopteris are one of my favorite groups of plants. This one doesn't bloom as nice as the other ones. It does have a tiny bloom, but it's pretty insignificant and with the heat, it just disappeared. And what's amazing about this variegation, it will actually take full sun. Ah, nice. You know, it'll need some water in full sun. It's a little more drought tolerant, part shade. The variegation changes in part shade, mm -hmm. um, but it does well in either one. Yeah, because it's kind of gold and cream at the mm -hmm. bottom and then it gets whiter and whiter as you get yeah, to so the Yeah, so the top. more sun it gets, the whiter it is. And it's a, it starts out a little gold, but that actually will get more creamy in the shade. And about how tall will that get? It's about a three by three, not quite as wide, um, about two by three. Ah, nice, nice size. And then some more grasses, because I think mm -hmm. that we really can use that motion in the garden, mm -hmm. and then really you can leave these up until January, February oh, absolutely. before cutting them down. This one here is another miscanthus. This is miscanthus purpureans, which is a, it's the flame grass. Pretty. And it has this beautiful fall color. It's kind of a plain Jane plant all the rest of the year, but then we get into fall and it does this. Ah. And it's, that's just amazing. And the, the miscanthus sometimes, will, depends what our fall and winter does mm -hmm. on how well they hold. The foliage sometimes doesn't hold, but the flowers actually will hold a long time through the winter. And that's about three feet? That one's three to four feet. Mm -hmm. All right, and then one more. I love this gold. And you have a whole hedge of this I one. I have it's a whole beautiful. bunch of it. This is um, one of the Calamagrasses. I actually carry four different kinds, different variegation in green. They are actually one of my favorite grasses. It's probably one of the best on the market just because they're deciduous grass. They're a cool season grass, so they come up early in the spring bloom about um, May to June, but then persist. So these are June flowers. Yes, they're brown, but they're still holding beautifully. And as it, we get into fall and get cold, the whole plant will turn brown, but it holds its shape amazing through the winter. It doesn't fall apart in the ice storms or the winds as much as other things. At some point you do need to cut it down. On my hedge, I miss it when I cut it down. It feels <laughs> like my garden's naked without it. Uh, well, you have to come out to see out in the garden or and to come and see that hedge. The season will be ending at the end of October. So go to the website for all the hours and the dates. Carol, thanks so much. It's always really nice to come out. Thanks, Judy. Garden Time is brought to you by Portland Nursery, a passion for plants, a nursery for plant people. Hi, I'm Sarah from Portland Nursery, and I'd like to invite you to our annual apple tasting. No one does apples like Portland Nursery, so come join us, always the second and third weekends of October. Sample a variety of apples from sweet to tart. Enjoy fresh pressed apple cider, piping hot apple strudel, and bins of freshly picked apples and pears. We'll have live entertainment, crafts for the kids, and cooking demonstrations. Don't miss our annual apple tasting at our 50th and Stark location. Portland Nursery, a passion for plants, a nursery for plant people. If you build it, build it right. Build it to last. Don't just build it for yourself. Build it for the next generation. Build it with par lumber and keep building the great Northwest. PAR's Design Center showroom is now open in Aloha. It's the perfect one-stop solution for homeowners, builders, or remodelers. Come on in. Our door is open on 185th Avenue in Aloha. Why let the weather dictate when you can enjoy your garden? With a greenhouse by Solar Gem, you don't have to. Grow your dream garden year-round right in your own backyard. Our long-lasting fiberglass greenhouses are made for gardening enthusiasts of all skill levels and delivered right to your home. Solar Gem greenhouses need no assembly, are virtually maintenance-free, and come with a limited lifetime warranty. Call us at 800-383-3055 or find us on the web at solargemgreenhouses.com. It's the standard TV and appliance store-wide sale. Save on hundreds of appliances, mattresses, and HD TVs now through Monday. Get a GE Front Load Watch. Washer with steam, now $6.59. Huge savings on a Samsung stainless steel French door refrigerator, now only $12.49. Or get a stainless steel Frigidaire dishwasher for just $2.99. And get our lowest price ever on a Beautyrest Queen mattress, only $3.99. Hurry, Columbus Day savings won't last long. Standard TV and appliance. So I am at Portland Nursery on Stark Street. I'm sitting here with Sarah Ori. And Sarah, let's, let's just be honest. It's that time of year where we are gonna celebrate apples, isn't it? Yes, it is. <laughs> it's harvest time, and we couldn't be happier to have fall weather coming. So now, what year is this? 
2015. Yes, I know that, but what year is the <laughs> apple tasting? It's the 28th <laughs> annual apple tasting 20, at Portland Nursery. Oh Street. my goodness, that, it seems like it's gone on forever because it is a huge event. It is, and it's getting bigger every year, which we're so happy about. Um, so for those of you who haven't been to apple tasting before, we have, um, it's somewhat like a wine tasting, but with apples. So it's we've true. got, you know, 50 different kinds of apples. You can go down the line and taste each one and see which one you think is your favorite. Or, um, we and have they, some really, for pies they really and taste whatnot. different, don't they? They really do. Different textures, yeah. all sorts of things. Um, I think, you know, people don't really get that exposure in the grocery store no, when you've got no. just, you know, the top five brands. Um, so we have the tasting um, pears as well. Then we sell um, as many of the apples as we can for 99 cents a pound. Live music, fresh pressed cider, hard cider tasting, free kids crafts. I mean, it is. It's a big event. It is. <laughs> yes, it has gotten to be. Yes. So I had. To, I was wondering because of the of the really hot summer we had. How did that affect? Do you think you'll have less? Will you still have a large selection of of, of apples to purchase? Um, that's a really good question. Um, so apples normally, you know, different varieties ripen at different sure. times. So this is actually the first year that we've had to put apples in refrigeration before the festival due to the heat because really? everything was kind of ripening at the same time. Um, so we still will have apples. There Lots will still be apples, apples for everybody. <laughs> um, we have been storing them, um, but it will be a really great year for pears. Usually it's a little early for pears when we have the yeah. apple tasting, but this year they're going to be be just perfect. So. And they're a great they're a great cousin of the apple anyway. They're right there together so th that'll be a great tasting of those and then you can buy them as well. Yep. So is there other things like often you do like food drives? Is that still going on? Yes, thank you. Yes, we are doing a food drive for the Oregon Food Bank. Um, really want to encourage people to bring in some canned food. Yeah. Um, we, we have a raffle for Portland Nursery gift cards. Nice. Um, so if everyone can just bring a can of food, we could do a lot of good. But Sarah, it really isn't just about apples and pears, is it? No, it did start as an apple tasting, um, just purely tasting the apples, but it's really evolved into a much bigger event. Yeah. Um, we're, we've got some local vendors, uh, food demonstrations, you know, with the apple pressing. Yeah. Um, all and kinds of yummy stuff, food really. like strudel and ice yeah, cream. So. It's delicious. Now, uh, the event actually started yesterday, but tell w when the dates are continuing. Yeah, so it is yesterday, today, and tomorrow, and then next weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Well, you know, it was back in 1996 when I first visited the Apple Tasting, and it blew my mind back then. And they continue to make a great event every single year. So, for more information on this event, you can go to gardentime.tv and we'll click you over to the Portland Nursery website. Thank you so much, Sarah. Thanks. Garden Time is brought to you by Capital Subaru, your way on the parkway. They had to take the car, they had to get it open with the jaws of life, take me out on a backboard, took me to a Trauma One Center. I absolutely feel like the Subaru saved my life. Well, we, we trust Capital. We trust our salesperson here, Jackie. Jackie's great. I believe that she really cares about us. She teaches me about the Subaru. Our, our way, way on, on the parkway. parkway. Fall is a time to think of planting and planning. Planting new plants now will help them get a jump start on next year. Black Gold All Purpose can help your plants get ready for winter and next spring. Formulated with a blend of natural and organic nutrients, it contains everything your plants and spring bulbs need for a happy and healthy start. Look for Black Gold All Purpose at your local garden center or nursery. Black Gold, all the riches of the earth. Are you tired of fighting black spot on your roses? Having trouble with where to prune and when? If you want to end the confusion, call the experts at Garden Rose Consulting. Our family has been growing roses for three generations. No matter the size of your garden or the size of the rose garden you dream about, we can help make yours a showcase rose garden. Call us for a free on-site consultation or visit us at GardenRoseConsulting.com. Have you ever wanted to see a cranberry bog? I am actually at Long Beach with Kim Patton. And Kim, we are actually at a research center, aren't we? 
This is the WSU Research Station, and yes, it's a research farm. It's about 10 acres of cranberries that we, we grow for research and commercial production. Ah, and you're in charge here, and you are doing a lot of research on, on what? I see plants here, so you're looking for different kind of attributes for these plants? Uh, we do a lot of variety testing, then we look at production, disease resistant, fruit rot resistance, uh, fruit quality, uh, as well as we also do a lot of pest management work, work on, we have a lot of plots out there that look at weed control, disease, uh, and insect control. Ah, and they're really pretty plants, and so they look like little kind of a shrub. What kind of a plant are they? They're a low-growing vine, and they look just like this, whether they're 100 years old or whether they're just a three or four years old. And so they really just a low profile, uh, uh, like a ground cover. Oh, it is nice. And so uh, here we are in October, and so we're getting close to harvest? We are right on harvest. Uh, it usually starts mid-September and goes until mid-November. Uh, so Kim, I'm seeing that there's different kind of berries, they're different colors, where when I go to the grocery store, they're mostly red. So what's that difference? Well, there are a lot of varieties. Uh, cranberries were selected in the wild, and so a lot of the varieties we're growing are actually just wild selections uh, from, east, from the East Coast. Uh, but within the last 20 years, there's been a lot of new releases, and they're much darker in color, uh, a richer, higher anthocyanin. So uh, what, what we're seeing here is a, mm. it's a much darker variety uh, and higher pigment than the traditional uh, varieties that you're seeing out there. Generally, though, you get the stuff on the, underneath the canopy. It's a little bit lighter. The stuff up on the top is a little bit darker. And the anthocyanins are actually more healthy for us. There's a lot better kind of um, vitamins for us. Uh, that's correct. So a lot of the, the pigments that are associated with cranberries that have all the, the nutraceutical value uh, are associated with that red color. Ah, and so we are going to go see a harvest, so let's go over there. Super. Great. So we've learned about the cranberry plants from Extension, but now we're actually talking to Ardell, who's a farmer, and this is one of your bogs. Right. And so this is, um, what kind of harvest is this called? Uh, this is water harvest or wet harvest, uh, where we put water on the bog, beat, beat the berries off, and then uh, surround them and drag them to a corner, and then and elevate then off them they off, go. They, off into the trucks. So you're going to be flooding. So how long does that take? This is a big piece of land. How yeah. long does it take to flood it? This is about a, a little bit over an acre, and it's about two, two days ahead that we'll start flooding. And then uh, if it's not quite up, when I mean, it depends on how dry it is, sure. whether it soaks in or not. And then we'll top it off before the crew comes in. And so these guys are really using muscle labor. Today, yes, the water didn't get very high when they needed to start. So they're having to drag through the vines, which is not ideal, but uh, generally it's the water is floating, the berries are floating, and it's, it's a little simpler. Yeah, and so they're dragging it to like a central location right, right here on the shore, and then right. what happens? Then we'll set up an elevator. It's like a little escalator. <laughs> and it elevates them into the trucks, which into a uh, six tote truck. And each tote has about a thousand pounds in it. Wow. So when we're taking a truckload, it's about three ton. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And then where does it go from there? It just goes north uh, about two miles for us here uh, to the Ocean Spray Receiving Plant. And then they'll clean them and get them ready to either process or put to the freezers. Ah, and then we go to the store and get them. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Now, and the, but the ones you get at the store are the fresh pick. Do you have just one variety of cranberries that you grow, or no? Many? We have several, and we've been changing to new varieties. And the one, the reason we change is to get some that have higher yields, or they produce earlier and darker color and more uh, disease resistance. Oh, that's really important, definitely. Yes. Yeah. Well, right now we're going to go to another place and talk about a special event, so let's go. Okay. Well, it is a special event happening today, and I'm with Betsy, and Betsy, where are we? We're at the Columbia Pacific Heritage Museum in Ilwaka, Washington. And so what is the name of the festival? It is the Cranberrian Fair and Harvest Festival. And so, or it could be the other way around, but it is, <laughs> we call it the Cranberrian. Yeah, and for short. Yes. And so what will be happening when we come and visit? Well, there's all kinds of things going on in Ilwaka. Um, here at the museum, we have vendors. We have about 18 vendors, and we have a lot of demonstrators, so we have uh, people demonstrating ceramics and 
uh, weaving and spinning and quilting and on and on. Um, so it's really uh, all of the wonderful things that go on in, uh, in the craft world ah. here at the museum. So Betsy, is this a recent festival? You started it recently or not? Well, the, the museum actually restarted it in the 1980s. It originally started in the 1920s wow. as a way for the people of the South Pacific County, uh, the Long Beach area, to showcase the beautiful um, objects that they made, like quilts and and uh, knitting and sewing and those mm -hmm. kinds of things, mm -hmm. as well as their products, the cranberry products, uh, apples, strawberries, beans, anything that sure. people grew, they would bring to the fair. Uh, really a rich history around here. Very much so. Well, that sounds like a lot of fun, but there's also another museum, and I'm with Melinda. And Melinda, what's the name of the museum that oh, you work at? It's the Cranberry Museum, and it's in Long Beach on Pioneer Road. And so what's going on there during the festival? We're going to be harvesting our cranberries oh, cool. so that the uh, visitors can come and see actually how cranberries are harvested. Oh, that's going to be so much fun. We really had fun watching that. Melinda, when people come over to the Cranberry Museum, what will they see? Well, it's a nice, unique little museum. We have historical equipment that uh, was used uh, in the harvest in early days. Lots of historical pictures. And I love the store, and you have cranberry ice cream, which was a really treat. Right, and of course, most of the things in the store are all cranberry. We have to promote our industry, so it's cranberry. Of course, of course. Really, there's such a lovely um, festival up here. You have to come for the weekend, come up on Saturday or Sunday, come to both museums, and then you'll be able to see the harvest. For any other information, please go to gardentime.tv. We'll click you over to their websites and you get all the information. Ladies, thanks so much, and have a great festival. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Bring the whole family to Bauman's Harvest Festival, the number one pumpkin patch and fall festival in the Northwest. Go through the dark maze, ride the swing lines, or try our new Pumpkin Hollow Laser Adventure. We are open every day to Halloween. Be sure to come down for some fresh apple cider, delicious pies, and find your perfect pumpkin. There's food, fun, and dozens of activities all over the farm. So make a day of it. Bauman's Harvest Festival is located just five miles from the Woodburn exit. Go to Bauman'sHarvestFestival.com. Every year, trees fall or break, causing property damage, power outages, and injury. Now is the time for Bartlett Tree Experts and Collier Arbor Care to get your trees ready for the extreme conditions ahead. Our free consultation will help to spot the signs of potentially hazardous trees. We can help address problems before they occur. Whether it's trees or shrubs, we can help you get a healthy and beautiful garden. Collier Arbor Care and Bartlett Tree Experts, providing environmentally safe tree care since 1907. A destination farm and garden market featuring the very best each season has to offer. Smith Berry Barn offers seasonal farm fresh fruits and vegetables and specialty herbs and perennials. Visit the historic barn for distinctive gifts, gourmet foods, and homemade milkshakes. It's our annual Heirloom Apple Festival. Sample apples on a fun-filled day for the whole family. Centrally located off of Shoals Ferry Road between Sherwood and Hillsboro, Smith Berry Barn, growing good taste from the ground up. As gardeners, I think we love to garden all year long. And what about a greenhouse to help you do that? I'm with Pat from Solar Gem Greenhouses. Hey, How you Judy, doing? Good to see you again. And really, this would be like a dream come true in anyone's yard. So why would I want a Solar Gem Greenhouse over maybe a different one, a, a do-it-yourselfer? Well, you know, there is a, a sea of backyard greenhouses out there. But 95, 98% of the ones that you will find are the build-it-yourself, do-it-yourself, assemble-it-yourself kind of greenhouses. And when you have a greenhouse that has to be assembled, that has to be put together, first of all, not everybody wants to do that. Not oh, everybody, of yeah, not everybody's a do-it-yourselfer and wants to spend 50 or 60 hours trying to do that. But that can rob you of an ability that a solar gem gives you, and that's the ability to grow year-round in our climate in the Pacific Northwest. When you have things that are put together, you have gaps, you have seams, you have joints. This is where cold air can readily come in, sure. and the warm air you're desperate to keep in gets out, and that robs you of an ability 
to really garden year round, but a solar gym is designed for that. It really is a cold weather champ. So it would come just like this to my home? Yes, exactly. You know, and that's the beauty of it. This is 1 8 inch rigid fiberglass and we put a marine grade gel coat uh, over it. You can see my hand wow. through it. The sun goes through, but the weather doesn't. Uh -huh. So it's got a marine grade gel coat on it that is UV stabilized, so it's not going to deteriorate over the years. And importantly, we're so confident that this greenhouse is going to do wonders for you for years. We give it a limited lifetime warranty. Wow. As long as you own a Solar Gem greenhouse, we're going to stand behind it. Nobody else does that anywhere. Ah, and so I love the low maintenance of it, the low setup maintenance right. of it. And so what about a flooring? Oh, good point. That's a great point. You know, with a Solar Gem, you don't have to have a concrete slab, ah. a wood deck, or some kind of special footer. But your build it yourself, do it yourself, wood, plastic, glass greenhouses always require something along that line. You don't need that here. This sits right in your backyard just like you see it. Uh, in places where it's extraordinarily cold and snowy, it's great for wind load, it's great for snow load, it's a strong, strong structure. We call this the Gothic Arch Design. Mm. Uh, and it's just designed to take everything that Mother Nature can throw at it and shrug it off. We've got these as far north as Alaska, oh. all the way down to the Mexican border. So everything Mother Nature can give it, <laughs> it can take it. Yeah, and I love that it has a roof vent and also a back vent. Yes. Yes, I'm, really glad you good. I'm glad you pointed that out. These all come, every Solar Gem greenhouse comes with at least one, maybe two, depending on the size, of an automatic overhead vent. It opens and closes all by itself by the magic of a natural wax ah. that's inside that tube. When it, when it heats up, it expands, and the expansion pushes the, uh, the vent open, and when it cools down, it closes. So you get good cross ventilation in the warmer months and the convection of hot air out. Ah, neat. And I see that there's benches in here, and so that's all also a kit or does that come yeah the, yeah these these are pre-made at our factory when our factory is in Tacoma Washington oh, wow. as you well uh -huh, know yes. but these are cedar wood benches that we make pre-built in our factory that uh, a lot of our gardeners absolutely love we've got doubles with an upper and a lower shelf and a single with upper but no lower shelf a potting tray a watering nice. tray and strawberry trough you don't look, this is all about garden harvest and enjoy not build maintain and repair right this is why solar gem has become so popular ah, nice and there's other sizes I would think yeah you're right this is the small uh, it, we, we, we like to travel around when we do shows sure. with the small it's easy all of our greenhouses are going to be eight feet in width they only are going to differ in depth okay so this one right here is seven and a half feet long the medium is 12 feet long the large is double this size 15 Whoa, feet wow. long but we do have a real small one for people with an urban backyard nice. don't have much of a footprint and it's only four feet seven in depth ah, okay. so we kind of have one that's going to fit everybody's needs uh, uh, their, their, I guess, their motivations, their sure. gardening skills, and, and, and their footprint in their backyard. Ah. So if we want to see them, there's two places in the area. Yeah, yeah, we have two dealers in, uh, in, the, in the broadcast area. Uh, one right here in Portland would be um, Little Baja, and they're on Burnside, okay. where we we're visited with you last fall. Uh, they're a great place to go to see a solar gem, and if you'd like to buy one, to purchase one. If you're in southern Washington, say Vancouver or Woodland, go visit our dealer called Sugawa Nursery. Right. Both of them uh, can take place. care of you. But if you're in neither of those particular locales, feel free to call us directly at the factory uh, at our 800 number or go to solargemgreenhouses.com and we'll be happy to take care of whatever your questions you have or if you'd like to order one. Ah, uh, that's great. You know, everybody would love these in their yard. You can extend your season all year long. So go to gardentime.tv. We we'll click you over to their website. Thanks so much, Pat. Thanks, Judy. Thanks so much for watching Garden Time today. And you know what, Judy? Hmm. You were right. These get so much sweeter the oh, more you well, let me eat. Try. Yeah. Mmm, they're tart. <laughs> so be sure to take a trip up here to Ilwaco or Long Beach, Washington for the Cranberry Festival this weekend. And don't forget about the Apple Tasting Festival at Portland Nursery. I guarantee the apples will be a little sweeter. <laughs> for more information on both of those things, you can go to gardentime.tv. William and I thank you for watching, and we'll see you next week here on Garden Time.
The proceeding was a paid program of the Gustin Creative Group and its sponsors.